This is Patrice Wendling at the American Society of Clinical Oncology speaking with Dr. Ellen Smith, who's done some research into the use of duloxetine for a very common side effect of chemotherapy, uh, peripheral neuropathy. What is the mechanism of action, do you think, that's working here? These patients were not depressed, so it wasn't simply that they were feeling better, and the dose, I believe, was subclinical for depression. That's correct. We actually excluded patients who were depressed. The mechanism of action is that duloxetine increases the amount of two pain-inhibiting neurotransmitters in the brain, serotonin and norepinephrine. So this is then a brain function, not really nerve, uh, that's doing the response. Yes, and this, this is a really very interesting because there now has been increasing evidence to suggest that patients that have chronic pain conditions, like painful neuropathy, fibromyalgia, osteoarthritis, actually may not have in every circumstance evidence of peripheral injury, but yet continue to have pain. And so we believe that these patients actually are continuing to have pain because of abnormalities in the central nervous system that have to do with how we process pain. 11% did actually see an increase in their pain. What might be going on there um, with the treatment? It's hard to say. Pain is a very complicated thing to study. There are many things that influence it, as psychosocial issues, cognitive issues, cultural issues. Uh, and so it's hard to say. I think, again, there may be patients who are more likely to respond to these kinds of drugs, maybe because their central nervous system isn't really working normally. And so is that the difference why, is that the reason why some people respond and others don't? That's what we still need to, to work on to, to determine. Now these patients were treated for only four weeks. Um, would you maintain them on these drugs? Absolutely. Again, uh, based on the results that show that our side effect incidence was very low, this would then suggest that patients could continue to take the drug. There's one caveat related to that. In other studies where this drug was used to treat diabetic neuropathy, these studies uh, had patients take the drug for 12 weeks. And so it is possible that if you're on the, pa on the drug for a prolonged period of time, you may then be more likely to develop side effects over time. So again, that's unclear at this point. There are other drugs that have obviously been used, tricyclics. Um, there are other so um, serotonin norepinephrine inhibitors. How, um, what is the advantage to duloxetine in this uh, regard? The advantage is that really for the first time we have some clear evidence to suggest that it works. The side effects are much less than side effects uh, that patients experience from tricyclics. There are other serotonin norepinephrine inhibitors and there are studies ongoing that are looking to see whether these drugs are effective as well. The main benefit though in terms of side effect profile? Patients don't have a lot of side effects. Now again that does have something to do with how the drug is dosed. In our study, we started with a lower dose, 30 milligrams for the first week, and then increased to 60 milligrams in the second week. Whereas in other studies, patients were started right off with the higher dose. And so side effect management has a lot to do with how the drug is initially dosed. And your next step forward uh, in terms of research? Our next step is actually to try to determine if we can identify people who may respond based on having evidence of abnormal central nervous system mechanisms that inhibit pain. And so there may be people who are what we call pain prone, people that at the get-go either have, because they have abnormal mechanisms ongoing in their brain, because there may be genetic factors that are playing a role, will be uh, more likely to develop pain, but then in turn, if their pain is centrally mediated, would be more likely to get an effect from a drug like this. Thank you, Doctor. This is Patrice Wenling, American Society of Clinical Oncology.